Hello friends, welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I'll teach you how to use database first approach technique of entity framework in ESP.NET MVC. Before moving ahead, I would like to request you to please subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon. So let's start. Now here I'll give you some background information about what is database first approach. Now in database first approach, as the name suggests, first we configure the database using entity framework. That means we access the database tables and procedures, functions, etc. and import it into the project and then use it for programming. While the other method is code first approach in which the programming part is done first and then the database configuration is done. So before starting the tutorial, I will explain you some important details about entity framework. Entity framework is a database connection framework which is used to connect the front end, which is your program. It can be ASP.NET, it can be a Windows application to the database, which is SQL Server or whichever database you are using. So let's move to the Solution Explorer. Now I'll right click the project and click on Add New Item. Now here I'll select ADU.NET Entity Data Model and I'll give a suitable name to it. Now I'll click on add. Next you need to select the EF designer option and click on next. This is the data connection window. Here I'll click on new connection. In the server name text box, you need to specify the name of your SQL server instance. I'm using SQL server 2014 and hence I have specified it. Dot means the machine name. If you don't know the machine name, you can put it as dot. Now as you can see, I am putting the username and password of SQL Server in the authentication section. As you can see, I am connected to the Northwind database. On the right hand side, you will see a link to the video which explains how to download and install Northwind database. Now I am testing the connection. As you can see, it is successful. Now I'll click on OK. Now as you select the database, the name of the connection string in the web.config is also changing. Now you need to click on the Yes option, which means that the username and password will be saved in the web.config file and it won't be encrypted. After doing that, you need to click on the Next button. Now here you need to select the version of entity framework you want to use. I am selecting 5.0, then click Next. Here all the tables, views and stored procedures of the Northwind database are visible. You need to select the items which you want to use. I am selecting customers table. As you can see, the customer entity data model has been created. So with this, we complete the configuration of entity framework. And now it is ready to use in our application. Now let's move to the solution explorer where I'll be adding a new controller. Here you need to select the empty option and name it as home controller. Inside this section method, we'll be making use of entity framework for fetching the data from the database table. So as you can see, I am creating an object of Northwind entities class. This name you I have seen before this name is the name of the web.config connection string the same name is used for the class of the entity framework data model now inside the view function i'll be making use of link query to select top 10 records from the customers table of the northwind database so as you can see i am fetching the data from the customers collection of the entity framework and then I am making use of take function to select top 10 records. So that's it. Now let's move to the view. You need to right click and select add view option. Click on empty. Then in the model class, select the customers entity data model.
inside the view in the very first line you will have to change the model to a collection instead of a single object so i am making it as i enableable so that the view understands that the data which will be sent to it will be a collection and not a single object now in order to display the data i'll be making use of html table the head section of the html table will be fixed while for the rows i'll be making use of for each loop and then inside the for each loop i'll be repeating the rows of the html table as you can see i have pasted some css styles these are for the html table styling As you can see, I am now creating an HTML table. Now this is the fixed section that is the header row of our table. So here I am making use of th element, which is the header element of the table, and I'll be creating four columns for the four fields which I'll be displaying here. Customer ID, contact name, city and country. now as you can see i am using razor syntax and i am making use of for each loop so the loop will be run over the model as you already know that we have declared our model as a i enumerable collection now inside the for each loop i am creating a table row similar to the header row the table row will also contain four fields here i am making use of razor syntax and i am specifying the field name which will be displayed here so as you can see our table is also ready now we are ready to run the code and see it in action as you can see the data from the database has been successfully fetched and also being displayed in the html table so with this we come to the end of this video today we learned how to make use of entity framework to fetch the data from the database and also we learned how to display the data in table format using html table and for each loop in case you need the source code for this video i have placed the link in the description section of this video thanks for watching please subscribe to my channel and don't forget to press the bell icon see you soon